choose you. Seas and sevens are destiny. Let's eat some Alolan food. I choose you. Hello, and uh, welcome to I Choose You, the podcast about cooking and eating Pokemon. My name is uh, Jeremy Zielik. I'm the host and Alton Brown of the group. Joining me this week, as always, is... Your friend on this show, Ben Montoya. Ian Davis, the King Charles III of the show. And uh, <laughs> the the festive gourd of the show, Evan Aubrey. Ooh, festive gourd. Yeah. Damn. Tis Pumpkin. the season for festive Not to be confused gourds. with any other gourds, but pumpkins, especially. No, like, swan-necked gourds or, like, the smaller no. ones that have, like, little flanges on them. I'm a, I'm a purist. Give me a simple, medium-sized orange pumpkin. Okay. <laughs> Um, did you know those are all the same plant? Like they're just like slight like uh, variations in like um, like disposition, but they're the same technically the same plant. That's fucked up, isn't it? Are they all pumpkins? Or are they all a different type of squash? They're all they're all just like squash. Like they're 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 it's like the difference between like different breeds of cats. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Sure. So like, to to get a different breed of a cat, you like grow one through a tube or something to make it longer. <laughs> I mean, yeah. to, to get a different breed of cat, you 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 mate two different types of cats together. Uh, but it it's similarly with plants, where you like, oh, I like the like the disposition of this plant, and we, we learned this in middle school. You make a fucking punnet square, and then you uh, put the put the different genes together, and bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. Yeah, you Maybe a... you learned this in biology, but I feel like Santa Fe Public Schools like failed me for most of my science education, mm. um, mostly because one semester for biology or one whole year in biology, there there was no permanent teacher. It was just a substitute teacher. The oh, whole year. yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of things that I actually don't know wow. that are normal science things to I'm gonna, know. I'm going to give a shout out to Mr. Graham. Uh, oh, shout teacher. out. You guys shout remember? Out. You guys have Mr. Graham? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. He was also my I track coach. Yeah. <laughs> he was the uh, teacher that everyone, except for me, had. And, and everyone, except for me, has a strong grasp of biological concepts. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, I hope that guy's still alive. Um, <laughs> okay. to, I mean, that's just the fact of it. Like, one day I will die and my students will think, oh, I wonder if Mr. Davis is, like, still kicking. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, so, I hope um, you are. You're still in your 20s. <laughs> You know, I always tell my kids, I'm like, listen, you guys got to be able to count this fucking rhythm on your own because when I die in a fiery plane crash, as all great musicians do, <laughs> no one's going to do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the big bopper. I'm just going to ride a plane directly into the side of a mountain. Yeah. And that's how, that's how I'm going to go. I, I, so random fact adjacent to plane crashes. Um, <laughs> I was in um, I was in Palm Springs over the weekend. And they're mm-hmm. just like, I went on an architecture tour and it's like amazing how many like celebrities they were talking about or architects, famous architects who all like died in plane crashes. I was like, man, this used to happen a lot more. Wow. Just randomly. <laughs> yeah, because, because planes used to be shitty at like being able to, you know, detect things. You'd be like, oh, I guess we're high enough. And then you'd run into the side of a mountain. Right. Yeah, because this, you, you couldn't see it. Was this a architectural tour of Margaritaville? No, so I maybe I'll save that for later in the show, or I could bring it up now. I don't know. No, oh, do the it. bullshit do preamble. It. Do so it. yeah. Also, while I was in Palm Springs, I did pass by the Palm Springs Margaritaville, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, so I immediately was like, "Tori, take a picture, like pull over." Um, but so the other day, I was like, oh, "Oh wait, they have merch there. Like that'd be the best." christmas present for one mr ian davis that i could possibly (laughs) ever think of and i i drive into the margarita compound uh and it's it's a compound ak's like coming out and you're like (laughs) no there there is aside from the nice welcoming like check-in roundabout there's like a gate that you i somehow got through but most people need a key for (laughs) <laughs> and I was driving around like I'm just looking for the gift shop. I don't know where I, I'm. Where is the gift shop? And I'm just driving Are you around. Chance wearing like a, a hat and like a Hawaiian shirt and like looked like you belonged. You I know, I was wearing Palm Springs attire, so that was like okay, almost there. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but I was driving around and like couldn't find any signs of it. It was basically just like it, it was a compound. It looked like basically condos, which I found out later some are, and you can own a piece of Margaritaville uh, if you want to buy a condo. Ian. That's where I'm retiring. <laughs> yeah. So, but regardless to say, I somehow ended up at the Margaritaville uh, convention or no conference center uh, and conference could not, <laughs> so could not find the gift shop, but wow. uh, Ian, <laughs> Ian, don't be discouraged. Uh, Christmas, uh, there's going to be something wonderful under your tree. Oh, Whoa. Okay. So, a real Margarita Santa Claus. Yeah. Did you, did anyone stop you and they were like, this is a restricted area or did you just, <laughs> it kind of, no one stopped me personally, but it did feel that way. Like all of all of the good times are on the inside, but on the outside, it feels like a camp, like a prison. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. The Margarita Society, is both metaphorically and physically, a prison. Yeah. <laughs> I like to imagine Ian retiring and is like, "That's it, boys. I'm I'm going off to live off the fat of the land. Like I'm totally <laughs> off the grid." Palm Springs Margaritaville and yep. the fat of the land is just like the cheeseburger that is served for dinner like yeah. every day at the bar that's just right down the, the walkway. Yeah, from Ian the tries to go to a Trader Joe's and they like two people come out and restrain him and they're like, sir, you can't leave. All you can have are the cheeseburgers. <laughs> Margaritas. Inject him with a margarita and then like a guy with a big syringe comes in and like yeah. gets you to sedate you. No one says no to the cheeseburgers in yeah. paradise. It's yeah. true. <laughs> They're like men in black flash you and like yes. take you back yeah. to your Give me some sunflower seeds and Activate the parrot heads yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and then like a bunch of attack drones like swoop in To like uh, stop you And they like form Ooh. like an animated image of Jimmy Buffett And he's like stay here You never want to leave <laughs> Attack drones that are also like drone show drones <laughs> Yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> Wow, yeah. great. Sound, literally sounds better than my fucking job right now, so uh-huh. let's go. <laughs> there you go. That's what that uh, 40 years in the public uh, school system is going to get you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> the land in Margaritaville. I either get my pension or it covers the rent at <laughs> Margaritaville. Margaritaville. In 40 years when like the Southern California is like a, a blasted heath of uh, nuclear fallout and... Uh, <laughs> It's like a Mad Max, but the Margaritaville remains. Yeah. It's a, yeah. <laughs> it protects right. you from the roving bandits of the desert. Yeah, that was uh, that was one times. of the that was one of the shirts that I didn't mention was available at the gift shop. Was uh, it says I left my four hundred one k in Margaritaville. Mm. <laughs> I do like yeah. the idea of like there being an iron bun that protects Margaritaville mm. from <laughs> <laughs> nuclear is it, disaster. Is it Tear like down dome? your bun. Yeah. <laughs> Is it like a big dome that goes over the city, but it looks like a hamburger? Yeah, imagine Simpsons like a, style. Imagine yeah. like the TV show Under the Dome, but uh-huh. if there were sesame seeds on top of it. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> and you know, Ian, in the premiere episode of Under the Dome, the titular dome cuts a cow in half. It does. And you could use that turn cow that into to a make sweet it... burger. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> mm. no other um, cows can get in. No. That, that you're gonna have to ration your cheeseburgers in paradise, but you know I bet the uh, Margarita Institute at the Margarita Society really has invested in like uh, artificial like lab grown meats, uh, so that they can continually produce cheeseburgers in paradise. You know, for the foreseeable mm. future. Mm. Paradise Labs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, writes hey, itself. We've got, we've got, we've got <laughs> yeah, we're so fucking good at this. It's like the if the Dharma Initiative were margaritaville <laughs> and then it's like soil and green it's like paradise labs is people oh. Oh. <laughs> um yeah I, in, uh, excuse me evan yeah. i imagine you said it felt like i was wasn't supposed to be there and like a security guard walks up to you and is like sir sir hold on and you're like oh uh, what's going on yeah i'm meant to be here and he's like it looks like you forgot your margarita and they just like <laughs> hand you a drink and then they leave you alone yeah oh why, why yes now i belong here <laughs> yes everyone has to have a margarita in hand while they walk at around. all times it's like their passport uh, but Evan, you you cracked a drink before this uh, margarita based uh, diatribe, and I was wondering what it was. I did, and uh, is it a margarita? I, no, but as I alluded to, um, it is a pumpkin cider. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And how is it? Delicious. I've had this one before on the show. Okay. Get it at uh, your local Trader Joe's, perhaps. 
Um, yeah. But it is pretty good. It tastes very cinnamony. It's nice. Oh, Ooh. shit. Um, ben, I notice you're uh, drinking a cup of tea. Is it uh, any particular flavor of tea? No, it's just like, I think it's called throat comfort or something. <laughs> Um, so I'm the throat goat on this Guzzlord episode, um, <laughs> trying to really protect the vitals on, yeah. you know, this is the sacrifice I'm making for this show to give uh-huh. you warm, gols- g- gulset, gulset? golden dulcet tones for your ears. Uh, guzzling tones. Uh, Ian, do you have a drink this week for LaCroix boys? I hate that for the remainder of my days, I will not hear the term throat goat and not think of Nancy Frank. <laughs> <laughs> this is truly the curse of of reagan uh, of um, memes ruined uh man i mean it's it's kind of like how you can not encounter any problem in modern society and not think this was caused by ronald reagan yeah. so that's true kind of they have that effect on us i think I, I thought, as I a power was, couple I, I thought it was like when ian looked at a mug root beer and he's like oh shit mug memes like he sees one in the store and he like has a dissociative episode and he's like, I'll pour yeah. myself a nice big mug or whatever. For the for the unaware listener, since we've talked about the last time we talked about mug memes, which I think was several episodes ago, there's been many mug memes in the group chat since. Yes. Um, something in the algo is uh is really moving moving things forward on the <laughs> so mug meme it, are mug memes is mug memeing new or is this a meme that's been around for generations underground that is like now starting to surface like i've it's i've only like just started seeing of, yeah. uh, memes. <laughs> the way you get there you know like you drink your mug root beer you black out you wake up <laughs> there's a a small bulldog licking your face mm. and then you find <laughs> yourself in the underground mug uh comp the, the mug mound <laughs> it's like a big ant hill but with bulldogs and uh, <laughs> root beer <laughs> just like an ant hill yeah yeah it's uh, like when i was a child and i did pour soda into ant hills just to see what would happen oh no God, <laughs> killed birds vinegar with soda chips, no all, the, all those ants just nuts. evolved into to bulldogs Yes, oh, that's, that's how, how the bulldogs, bulldogs yeah. came to be. Is I poured a bunch of root beer down an ant hill, and slowly they like coalesced into a, a anthropomorphic bulldog. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, I have a um, Santa Fe Brewing Company social experiment um, mm. for my beverage tonight, which is like their traditional social hour beer, but with a cherry twist. Ooh. Uh, so it's pretty good. Highly recommended, as as usual. Yeah. So I've got, I've got water. Um, mm. My man. Oh, man. and not a lot of it either. I'm running dangerously low. We got to wrap this show up. Okay. <laughs> well, and that'll do it for today's episode. I mean, feel free at any point if you're if you're parched, if you're famished, yeah. to just yeah. get up. Are you gonna like look at us and we're gonna like turn into a water fountain like? Uh, like a cartoon character looking at a person on like a raft and they turn into like a drumstick or something. <laughs> More likely like Jeremy's face just pop. It's a bulldog. And then Ben's face <laughs> pop bulldog. Wait, um, Ian, when was the last time you actually enjoyed a mug root beer? It's been years. Okay. It's been years. <laughs> but Here. I've Poser. always, uh, even before the meme of it, I won't say mug, but like root beer. Uh-huh. Uh, easily like... I I would be willing to say it has a a chance of being number one soda, interesting sweet beverage. Oh. Okay, well, uh, when you find a sixty four pack of mug root beer under your Christmas tree this season, <laughs> please don't. I don't drink soda. Please <laughs> don't. <laughs> uh, what if but, what if it's like mug next and it's not mug yeah. next? Mug mug uh, crystal mug. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say. I don't know if Mug's in the position to be going like outside of their comfort zone on mm-hmm. uh, on what they can do. I don't know if they're really ready for like a Mug next. Well, mm-hmm. and they they can't legally, right? Because all their memes are built <laughs> on the concept of like this is an unchanging like pillar of stability in this hectic, terrible world. So, so like, are you saying like, but Ben, can we do like a like a good marketing ploy where we make like a woke mug root beer and then like an anti-woke mug root beer but it's the same beverage oh like the got like, milk campaign but it's the yeah but and we like play them off one another to to get both sides to get into the mug game <laughs> is it like 
Is it like uh, the the two spies? The... Yes, but spy versus they, spy. But, but they're using it to prop mug. up their mug versus business. mug. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, mug mug has an easy foray into gum. <laughs> Have you ever had root beer flavored gum? Now you can just spell it backwards. Mm. Have I? Oh. I don't think so. Actually, I kind of yeah. like that idea, though. Should it be like slightly fizzy, the gum? Yeah, it's like Ooh. it's like when you get the root beer gummies, right? It, it mm. they're, or like the cola yeah. gummies. Yeah. Yes. Here's all right. Here's the ad. Uh, camera pans in from the left. There are some kids like playing with a Ouija board on the ground. They're like, oh, <laughs> okay. wait, check this out. And they pull out their mug vinyl record and they put it on. They start playing it in reverse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. This is much more. And, and they're like, well, I'm mug. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, the like you're saying board's... like, mug, 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 gum, gum, gum. And then like... <laughs> <laughs> Their cans of root beer like transform into like sticky gum. globs of gum, and they get like yeah. stuck to the wall or whatever. I don't know. Okay, one interesting. Turn, one I like this. A gum monster. Um, they. Uh, uh, I was gonna say signs point to gum, but that's a magic eight ball, not a Ouija board. Mm. Um, yeah, the, the Ouija board pulls like a Christmas story where it just says "Buy a mug root beer" or something. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ian, how do you feel about the fact that um, that Ouija boards are made by like the Parker Brothers or something? Feels the Hasbro right. Company. Yeah, the Hasbro mm. company. Like it's just like, oh, I can contact ghosts by the people who make Monopoly. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I think it's false to think that board games have to like remain s- strictly in our like plane of existence, right? Okay. Why shouldn't the Has Brothers uh, <laughs> capitalize on interplanar planar uh, games? I like, does Hasbro so, stand for has brothers? <laughs> I really hope so. Um, so the assumption with your that you're making here is that when you're, you know, uh, out there with what in the basement with your Ouija board and it's like three a.m. or whatever, and you're doing it, it's like the ghost is playing a game. Like you're get, you're playing a game with the ghost, like a board game. That mm-hmm. is like the the whole premise, right? It's like oh, like. The ghost is like you're holding the magnifying glass. The ghost is also holding your hand and guiding you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the idea is that like everyone's like you're communing with the dead and the their move. The ghost is like moving the planchette through mm-hmm. the people communicating with them on the Ouija board. And that counts as a board game to you. Well, I'm <laughs> yeah. In fact. You know what? I'll come out and fucking say it. I bet the ghosts, the reason they're so mad when you do the Ouija board, because they're like, shit, this is the only game we got. <laughs> where's, where's, uh, I, I don't know, uh, uh, Twilight Imperium. Or, yeah. The, or, game, uh, the game of the afterlife. Yes. Of, uh, nice. Ooh, that's good. What about like Operation? But you Ooh. kill them. But you, mm, <laughs> kill them. Every time. <laughs> so you put organs back into the person. Hmm. So okay, it's just so the buzzy s- noise the entire time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're saying that all it's just that the Ouija game is the most ghost accessible. Like all the other Hasbro games are are could hypothetically be played by ghosts, but they're just not very ghost friendly. No, what I'm saying is oh. uh, those games are strictly bound within our realm mm-hmm. of existence. So the ghosts mm-hmm. has brothers. Yeah, we need to develop some Ouija adjacent games like <laughs> hungry hungry hippo um, <laughs> trouble candy land uh-huh. sorry battleship that, oh yeah you, Battle, oh battleship would be kind of hard you ghosted no, battleship my battleship would work really well because you'd be like a5 <laughs> and then you'd be like the ghost oh, yeah. told me to say a5 and then <laughs> you took my battleship or whatever mm-hmm. uh, not to get uh not to prolong the main section of the show even longer, but I'm really just curious. Does you know it is uh, Halloween time, uh-huh. and uh, does anyone on this show believe in ghosts? Like for real, believe in ghosts? No, yeah. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a I'm not a firm believer. I will say there there could be a spirit, but I won't say like 
ooh, the, like all those ghost hunter shows, is, there's just someone yeah. in the background like shaking something. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say they don't exist. I mm. I don't know. Uh, I mean, not to get we're not uh, we're not going to get too deep into. No, 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 no. I'm not. Here, but... It wasn't like to like dogpile at anyone who did. <laughs> yeah, either. I'm just. I was just curious. I'm, I'm going to say I. It. I don't know if I can completely buy into like our like the energies of this life just completely being gone when we die. Like I think there could be like residual mm-hmm. things happening. Um, and. But would really, you call it a ghost? Uh, sure. I mean, yeah, the ghosts are the friends we've made along the way. You know. <laughs> Yeah, oh. like Casper. True. <laughs> As if you ever thought about ghost. how fucked up the concept behind Casper is. That he's a kid? Yeah. That, oh, <laughs> that he's dead. a dead kid. Yeah, it's a dead kid, kid and you're hanging out with him. Kids die all the time. Oh, yeah. That's the problem. In fact, there should be more of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, so this is what this is my always my thinking is like I do agree with you on a certain extent, but from my perspective, wouldn't there that wouldn't every place be haunted then? Yes. You know, because there's a ton of people that have died over many thousands of years. Mm-hmm. And like, if they and all... Of course, the living are the envy of the dead. So why wouldn't they want to inhabit mm-hmm. uh, all of our uh, spirit, our realms? Maybe they don't always, they don't all have unfinished business. Maybe most of them are, are cool and they're just like up there. And then there's a few down here that are, are haunting shit. Or maybe it's like, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings. They're waiting to fulfill their debt. Maybe most, mm. most of the debts have been fulfilled. You know, it's like... Uh, Mm. You know, uh, they fought in the the big war, mm-hmm. the big one. The big. I guess then the main question would be who's going to be our Danny Phantom? Who's going to stop all the ghosts that are coming mm. through? <laughs> like who's going to fight for me and you? I guess um, is what I'm saying. I think I hate to say it, but Ian is the most Danny Phantom coded of the group. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Nice. Interesting. I'll take it. Jeremy, um, you're definitely the Point Dexter guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not black though, so <laughs> yeah. Um, but you are. That nerd. character you on the yeah. show. <laughs> I, I'm a big ben, fucking nerd. Um, you, you have to be the vegan goth. <laughs> Hell yeah. yes. I'll take it. And then um, uh, they had a tall friend on that show. Um, <laughs> the I'm, I'm the token <laughs> tall friend. Yeah. yeah. God damn it. Is Evan the teacher that he keeps getting in trouble with? Mm. Mm. No. Maybe you're like, maybe you're, I feel like the mom was cooler than the dad on that show. Hmm. <laughs> Like yeah, that's true. Mom. The dad was kind of like dumb. Well, he had I like mean, the Jimmy Neutron. His Neutron's parents are effect. lame, despite the fact that they can travel to ghost dimensions, which yeah. is a funny conceit of the show where it's like they did everything they wanted to do, but he still hates his parents. Well, surely, like, the show is completely told through his, like, it's his story, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unreliable narrator. It's like Fight Club. <laughs> uh-huh. it's, yeah. it's exactly like that. Jeremy, write, that, that... write that paper where Fight Club and Danny Phantom intersect. One, he has a split personality, like Fight Club. Two, he I'm not has saying a right girlfriend, now. like Fight Club. Three, he blows up the credit card buildings, like Fight Club. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, He's close. There's only one story, and it's Danny Phantom. All roads lead to Danny Phantom. God, what if Fight Club had a rap about what was going on in the movie? <laughs> be probably better for it yeah 100 yeah. the movie started it was like <laughs> um i gotta beat him up because i'm in a fight club yeah yeah anyway what yeah. is this show uh, i choose you podcast about cooking eating pokemon um each week we randomly select a new pokemon to cook and prepare for one another we talk about our recipes and then we vote in a very de- democratic fashion for who has the best recipe. Um, this week, the Pokemon we're cooking and eating is Guzzlord, uh, the Ultra Beast. Uh, <laughs> yes, Ben? No, time to guzz. Gulping. Yeah, it's it's time to guzz. Um, I believe last week was a tie and I forgot to do a poll. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. I, I was uh, jet lagged because of the <laughs> trip. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh-huh. You were um, peeping. That's why you couldn't. It was <laughs> between it was between Ian and I. Yes, yeah, so it was between Ian and Evan. So hey, let's flip a coin. Yeah, um, I don't have any coins with me. Um, uh, I got a coin. Oh shit! Right. Heads or tails, Ian? Heads. This is so exciting. I don't think we've ever done it. It's heads. Hey. Wow, Ian wins. 
<laughs> you know what's funny? This is actually sometimes how they decide tied elections. Is they like uh, flip a coin or draw a name from a hat. Well, same rule applies here. All, yep. all rules of elections apply here. Exactly. All That's of true. them at once. <laughs> Cast a revote. Yeah. The congressional diet will now uh, form a quorum to make the decision about the winner of this week's I Choose You, um, which was Ian. Ian, you're, uh, you're a werewolf? What did you say you were? I forgot. Uh, close. King Charles III. Okay. <laughs> 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 Werewolf was last week, Jeremy. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm stuck in the past. Uh, Ian, what is your recipe for Guzzlord this week? Uh, yeah. He's big. He's Guzzlon. Uh He's like the junk Pokemon, or Junkivore. Mm-hmm. Junkivore. Mm. So naturally, I was like, oh, junk food, right? Like, uh, nice. it can't be good for you. And then I saw in the flavor, or not in the flavor text, but in the biology section... Mm-hmm. of uh mr graham's class i saw uh rubbery it has like a mm-hmm. rubbery so Texture. i was thinking all right like a like snack food or food that isn't like exceptional for you that's a little rubbery um black licorice Ooh. oh, oh. Right. specifically pontefract cakes <laughs> fuck what the which fuck are is that? a uh they're they're a licorice treat that's um uh produced in pontefract england they're kind of fun imagine like a swish is some micro- fucking made up place that like <laughs> a beetle came from at one point <laughs> well i'm in pontefract right now shut the fuck up england what are you talking about exactly that's why i was king charles because nobody likes him i mm. thought oh mm. oh is he the current king i didn't realize he was the yeah. third yeah oh I guess that's my lord my guzz lord <laughs> oh it is. That, that's what his friends called him in high school <laughs> he's the real guzz champ <laughs> that's what they say about he's really like the nancy reagan of, of <laughs> the a true uh, guzz lord yeah he's, yeah he's the uk the throat goat from a, on the other side of the pond yeah <laughs> throat goat coast to coast King Charles III. <laughs> God damn it. That's our next t-shirt. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, so, yeah, these Pontefract cakes, they're just like, um, imagine, you know, a little coin-shaped licorice treat. But it, what's fun is that it's um, they're stamped with, like, the um, Pontefract castle's, like, insignia. Oh, cute. And they have been for, like, ever. It's a very old snack interesting um and it is i mean it's it's just it's basically like black licorice and i've never had one but like from this when i'm the sense i'm getting uh it is just licorice i guess people would drop them in like water for to get like licorice water because licorice has like a some sort of medicinal hmm. property yeah, mm-hmm. to it mm-hmm. um it's good for your throat or so they say but, but what it's not good oh <laughs> <laughs> Well, what it's not good for is in 2004, healthcare professionals warned against overindulgence in Pontefract cake after a 56 year old woman was admitted to hospital following an overdose. The woman what? consumed an overdose about. Overdose of what? Cake? Pontefract cakes. <laughs> Too much licorice. She, she was consuming 200 grams or 7.1 <laughs> ounces daily. Holy shit. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so that is a lot of a cake, but okay, 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 let me get this straight. She fucking ate a bunch of cake and then like Willy Wonka in the Charlie factory to the fucking hospital. They're like oompa loompa doopity doo, you ate too much licorice and now we have to like get you get rid of your gout or something. Is that what's going on? First off, I'm sure you meant to say King Charles and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred uh, percent. Nice. Um the second, uh due to this con- amount of consumption, uh Led to dangerously low potassium levels and subsequent muscle failure. What? Just f- fucking put wow. some salt or bananas on it. What are you talking about? Uh, the the active ingredient, uh, which is definitely pronounced glyceric acid, but I'm going to pronounce glyceric acid. Nice. Let's go. Um, yes. Let's go. They <laughs> recommended acid. You should really have 100 milligrams or less per day. <laughs> she was having 200 grams. Oh my <laughs> Jeez, god. Jeez. Okay. What the fuck? So, that to say, it's a snack. It's, it's, a, kind of, it's a little junky. Like, don't, you know, 
if you ate like you know 200 grams of <laughs> cheetos or whatever a day that probably would <laughs> okay so 200 they would grams send you to the that. hospital and say you overdosed on <laughs> cheetos so 200 grams is a quarter of a kilogram which seems like a lot or no a fifth of a kilogram yeah let me see so that's that. That does seem like a lot per day, but I don't. I'm not 100 percent on that. They said 7.1 ounces, which that doesn't seem like a lot, but it, I don't. I have no cons- Like, yeah, again, I don't, I don't know what this eight is ounces like. is a cup. Yes. So you're, yeah. you're like to our, a cupcake, yeah. one cupcake a day. Is that too much? Is this what Big Brother is trying to prevent us to do? <laughs> Turn the it. calendar. No. It's 1984. You pr- Can't eat one cupcake every day. You probably. All right, I'll, I'll back this up. I think I think that you can definitely eat. I think people do eat that much Cheetos every day, but like mm-hmm. they don't have an active like glizzy ingredient that uh, <laughs> takes away your your muscles. Ian <laughs> Davis, health professional, says Cheeto dust is good for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's my that's my snack. Pontif- Pontifract, Guzzlord. So. Is it just like licorice flavored, or is it like what else is in there? That it's it's licorice. The whole Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. No, the whole <laughs> so, the whole so thing. Guzzlord okay, is one hundred percent licorice. Um, I'm not going to say a hundred percent, but it's the licorice is his water. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Yep. The blood coursing through his veins is licorice. You like cut him in like ropes of licorice. Yeah, like, out. Uh, uh, Twizzlers fly out. Mm. I kind of see it with the like inner mouths that are like coming out, like the tentacle mouths. I see that you could like chop those into little like rounds, and those I can right. imagine those being. I also pictured like he's kind of round to begin with. If you just like squash him with a big stamp, oh shit! Be a big pontifract. Don't eat him in one day. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this thing is it, this candy is so old and it and it's stamped with the official seal it kind of reminds me of just like eating wax like like stamped wax mm. essentially they, there was a thing uh there was some sort of event where they um they actually used one as oh as a stamp i, I forget what the event like was. a full cake like they're like my lord and they put like a cake as a like stamp on it no, a piece think, of licorice, Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy, oh, okay. I think you're reading too much into the cake label because I think okay. the cake probably has to do more with it just being like a little round treat. Okay. It's it is just a piece of licorice, as far as yeah, I'm yeah. It, it is just like okay. it's called a cake, but in the same way that like the UK loves to call things that they're not, you know. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, uh, check this out. Um, blah blah blah. When the first secret ballot. In the United Kingdom was held in Pontefract on in August 1872. The ballot box used was sealed using a Pontefract cake stamp. <laughs> I didn't know if, like this was integral to the UK election legitimacy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. No one would dare open the sealed box because it was sealed with their sacred, uh, the, the sacred national licorice. treat. And yeah. instead of licking envelopes closed, you eat the seal off of it. Mm. Yes, yeah. uh, <laughs> right. Okay, I'll allow I'll, the United Kingdom. I'll allow it this time, ju- but just once. <laughs> if you do any wacky shit in the future, I'm gonna I'm gonna point and laugh. <laughs> All right, um, Evan, what's your recipe yes. this week? So yeah, as as Ian alluded to, they eat junk, uh, and you know what else eats junk are uh, goats. Mm. So it really is the goat. Pokemon, oh, the, the throat goat Pokemon, uh, and basically what I'm making is, is and I, I'm I'm assuming that like the stuff, the junk that this thing eats, kind of you know enhances the flavor profile mm. much much like a goat. Like you want them to eat as much trash as possible to be the tastiest. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but what we're making is a Jamaican curry goat. Mm. Jamaican curry does. The guzziest Jamaican curry. Nice. So basically, what this what this entails it's it's like a curry, like a stew, basically with your your chunks of guzzlord in it. So you get three and a half pounds of of guz meat, uh, some cooking oil, garlic, ginger, 
onion, curry powder, white pepper, fresh thyme, onion, potato, tomato paste, scotch bonnet pepper, uh, bouillon powder, and a little salt to taste. And basically, yeah, you just you stir up your, your bouillon into a nice broth. You add all your veggies in there, get those cooking and, and simmering and stuff, and then you toss in your meats. Um, and yeah, it's, it's basically just a good hearty stew that, uh, yeah, I, am, I, <clears throat> I don't imagine like it flavors the meat to taste like junk. It just like enhances maybe the funk of this meat. The funk in the junk. Yeah, the funk, <laughs> the junk in the trunk. <laughs> it does raise the question, what are you going to do with all that junk? <laughs> put it in a stew. <laughs> yeah, you boil, boil you it, mash it, put it in a stew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that, I guess it raises a question. Could you use like Guzzlord as like a garbage disposal where you're like, ah, oh, whatever. You just mm. throw it in his mouth and it like. You certainly disappears. could. It, it does say that it is a, a black hole that does not poop. Yes. It, it I said like that it doesn't they, shit. They very specifically <laughs> me, mentioned that it does not excrete anything. It might so wish it, it shit away. Who knows? Yes, it, it wishes might. it shit away. <laughs> and it, it implies that the other Pokemon do take frequent poops like <laughs> through, through, that this has to be mentioned what does right. it can it pee I, no it, do, it doesn't not. excrete anything no fluids oh. leave its body yeah no it's, sweat it, it's okay so let, me, let me I'll, I'll read it it says despite its appetite no droppings have ever been found it is speculated to convert everything it consumes into energy with no waste left over yeah it's a hundred percent energy efficient it takes every wow. piece of matter put in and turns it into whatever the guzzlord needs to live we could learn a thing or two from that guy yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, uh, modern biology does not permit us to be 100% efficient, which, you know, is annoying. We can't be like capybaras and have nice square poos that have uh, no uh, no uh, uh, nutritional value whatsoever. Mm. Well, even the capybara ain't the, the shit goat of... Uh... <laughs> Where is this going? <laughs> yeah. I'm what, saying what, Guzzlord what? got him beat, man. Yes, that's true. Like lit- <laughs> literally, we could just like have this. This guy could just like we could fly him on the jumbo jet from country to country, and he could clean clean up this whole town. Yeah, yeah. it's true. It's too bad there's only one of them. If every if every like city got one, and like <clears throat> instead of a dump, you just threw it in him, and it's like I I don't know. I feel like that would be a good setup going on kind of situation. Save all of our waste issues. Or maybe you like ride him around town, and he's like the garbage crayon or the garbage truck. So you're like on his back, and like. You bring it out and they like dump it into his mouth as he's going down the street. I love that. <laughs> <clears throat> nice. Maybe, if only. Thank you. Maybe you catch a few stray birds, but that's okay. All right, Ben, what is your recipe this week? So for my recipe this week, I was you know thinking of a seasonal. Uh, food because it is the spooky season mm-hmm. and this is a spooky Pokemon I would say um, it's got like big it's got like final boss energy I think yeah um, I, I, and, and it, I mean I was going to say in a JRPG I can imagine fighting this at the final boss but one Pokemon is a JRPG <laughs> and mm-hmm. two the, the Ultra Beasts in Pokemon Sun and Moon are kind of like extra hard boss fights that you do. So it is 100% yeah. that thing. I, I can yes. imagine playing Pokemon. I can imagine <laughs> exactly. this existing in the scenario that it was created for. <laughs> um, I just, but well, here's... Hold on. What, one oh. last thing is that I've been so warped by this podcast that I can't imagine <laughs> Pokemon in a non-we're-gonna-cook-and-eat-them context. Well, mm. I'm here to ground you in your core values, Jeremy, mm. because this Guzzlord... Mm. Even though you can't imagine it in a video game, I want you to reimagine it as a pumpkin. Oh, I got it! I got it! Like yeah. Charlie 18th. Brown style. Yeah, great like pumpkin. A great it's the great pumpkin. Guzzlord pumpkin. <laughs> the great Guzzlord, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, but the color scheme is a little bit off. Like the shape is all there. It's got like a stem, like you know, top. It's got like a very round, you know, body that mm-hmm. I assume you can just like scoop out lots of. Uh, squashed like yeah. uh, flesh from the inside. Like a you know, pumpkin, kind of, it has a bunch of claws. Like a pumpkin, it has claws. 
<laughs> but like a jack-o'-lantern, it has a face, which yes. I think is really where I'm drawing this from. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I assume like you know uh, James and the Giant Peach style, who can just walk in there, like a big, have a big community event, and like have people scoop out their Guzzlord meat. Um, but uh, there's only one kind of pumpkin that I could find that has a black or dark exterior mm -hmm. and has a yellow inside um and it's a pumpkin called the black cat pumpkin Ooh, spooky mm -hmm. yes another reason as i started going down this rabbit hole that i was like okay this is what i'm doing for my recipe for sure um so it's called a black cat pumpkin uh cat spell with a k and nice. um it's a uh you can it's not very popular so the only place that i could find <laughs> um <laughs> It is, like, through, like, a seed purchasing company for you to, like, grow them on your own. Um, and it says these eight ounce... So this is the seed company that you can buy this for. Um, these eight ounce to one pound deep Brunswick green, just shy of black pumpkins, are pint-sized. But they pack a pretty dramatic punch. <laughs> um, they have a classic, rounded, deeply ribbed shape and a black stem. Add these little devils to spooky fall displays or use their sweet pale orange flesh in your favorite pumpkin pie recipe um and eventually they do turn orange if you like store them well so um but it was the black and what if pumpkin. i don't want that to happen if you don't want that to happen don't let it happen um <laughs> <laughs> harvest okay, your pumpkin thank you. when it's still uh the dark green almost black shade um and then we're going to make a uh, classic uh, Dia de los Muertos uh, Mexican dish called uh, calabaza uh, and tacha, which is simply candied pumpkin. Nice. Um, and to make this like uh, Mexican candied pumpkin, basically all you do is take out your, your pumpkin, you like, you know, chop up your pumpkin, uh, peel off the... Uh, skin. In this case, it's going to be our Guzzlord, and you're going to peel off the rubbery skin. Um, and then uh, you're going to cut them into three to four inch slices. You're going to uh, get a pot of water going, and you're going to steam the pumpkin with water, cinnamon, and cloves for about 40 minutes. Um, and then by that point, the pumpkin flesh is going to be tender, so you'll drain that, leave that off to the side to cool. Um, separately, there's a uh, sort of cinnamon uh brown sugar uh syrup that you make with some water so in a, a small saucepan so you're going to cook that together um and uh stir it frequently until it gets a nice syrupy consistency um and then you're going to drizzle it on top of the uh pumpkin that you've steamed with the cinnamon and, and uh water and then also add some uh sweetened condensed milk on Ooh. top um and it's just a very sweet, uh, nice little treat, nice little offering that you can, uh, you know, maybe give to the folks on the other side of the veil um, as that holiday is approaching. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Guzzlord, I think, is just a perfect way to do it because it's so big. It's just like you can make a big community event out of it. Sounds pretty good. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ian, Ian, you have a question. I don't know if I do. I just wanted to say I like that the I, I looked up pictures of this gourd and um, the color, like on the inside, contrasting to the outside, definitely matches. My lord, <laughs> it seems like it was meant to be. My guzzlord. Like you gotta say instead it. of you gotta you gotta say like guts lord right when you're scooping out the insides. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. And then a guzzlord is eighteen feet tall. How do you do? You want to like live in the pumpkin for a little while before you eat it <laughs> ben and the giant pumpkin yeah um no i'm thinking it's more like a small village can come in and just like grab all the stuff that they need you know what i mean like people bring mm. in like ladders and like make like a fun little day out of it um are there seeds uh yeah but they're <laughs> once you get those out of there you know you're golden can you eat um, the seeds can you roast them like pumpkin seeds Ooh. They'd be really big. I'm kind of imagining because it's so big that each seed would be like the size of your head. So it's like An ultra seed. Uh -huh. Ooh. What, would you would you, you guys... eat a nut if it was the size of your head? 
Yeah, I'm not. If I could break it down anything. enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if there's an almond, but it was the size of your head, would you like just take a big bite out of it? Ow. No, I'd I'd have to break it down. <laughs> yeah. Um, Knife and fork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys have been to the botanical garden in Albuquerque. You've been in the big, the big pumpkin. Yeah, I haven't. Not recently. Oh. I don't. I don't. Where they had a big pumpkin? What's going on? Well, imagine what Ben is describing. But if it was a giant, I mean, it's not a real pumpkin. It's you know no. like made out it's of fake. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it had they like have like hanging pumpkin guts inside of it and like big seeds hanging Ooh, from the ceiling. Yeah, it's like Ooh. a real pumpkin. Okay, I'm a little intrigued, but if it's it's still not real. What about okay? Ben, can we do like that thing where that one guy had a giant pumpkin and he cut a top off, scooped out the guts or the seeds and whatever, and then he made it into a little boat and he like sailed down a river? Can we do that Whoa. in the Guzzlord? Lord? That would be pretty impressive. But I feel like because of the mouth, we'd actually have to like tip it on its side and mm. use mm. that as like the mouth up. Yeah. Yeah, mouth up. <laughs> I, I think just because tis the season, someone needs to like go over a waterfall, like Niagara Falls, inside a big pumpkin. Hmm. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's dangerous. time. <laughs> yeah, it is. it's fucking time. Is, is this like some sort of like Halloween ritual sacrifice? You yeah, know, it's, throw a pumpkin it's, over a waterfall. Happen, kind of commence situation. spooky season and yeah, sacrifice yeah. someone to the the spooky gods. Tw- happen twice a year in the summer mm-hmm. these a summer squash mm-hmm. and then yeah. the fall a winter, <laughs> a winter squash i don't think summer squash can get that big though not with that attitude <laughs> I, I mean well we'll definitely try our best have you guys ever seen like a really big pumpkin like one that's over like you know in five person? feet or whatever not in person not in person but i did watch there's the the uh what was that on discovery channel or something where they mm-hmm. had the the pumpkin chunkin where they would yes. like catapult giant pumpkins Yes. <laughs> is that but, the whole show? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're like, wow. we, we built a big catapult and we're going to throw a pumpkin as far as possible. And that's the, literally... the Mythbusters people were like real into that. Yeah. There's Dang. like 42 it... minutes of that uh, to, you know, during the writer's strike in 2008 or whatever. <laughs> I don't think it was you guys, but I saw, I did see like a, a Craigslist post making the rounds online that was like, I purchased this giant pumpkin. I. Uh, can someone please like loan me two hours like a backhoe so I can like get this thing to the river and live my dream of floating down the river in this pumpkin? Like, please, I can't transport this myself. Ian, was that you writing that post? <laughs> I would have thought. Listen, if I had the money to buy a pumpkin that big, I'd also splurge to like get that thing transported. <laughs> so, if you had a giant pumpkin, would you use it as a raft or would you use it as like a house? I think I'd want to <laughs> leave it intact and just, like, hang out on it. Yeah. Because <laughs> the moment you cut that thing open, the smells are also big. True. Oh, yeah. Big, big no, pumpkin, but, big smell. But think yeah. about this. You cut it open. You uh, scoop out, like, the seeds and whatever. You put some, like, cinnamon-scented candles in it. And, mm. like, they can, like, cook the inside a bit and, like, preserve it a little as well. And it smells like cinnamon. How hot are these? I think the real answer is I would cut it up. I think I I think I'd have to get like a movement. Like the four of us get together and we just like make pumpkin pies, nonstop. We're like, we're yes. in shifts. We're just constantly pulling them out of the oven until <laughs> they're all gone. Man, we only have like a week or so left of of spooky season. I have yet to reach my pumpkin pie quota. I haven't I, had any. I haven't had a either. singular pumpkin pie so far. I know so. we're we're all failing as a as a society. I will say, like, as we leave spooky season into thankful season, it does extend the 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 pumpkin pie season. There's still yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, I and you know, what? I definitely say I eat pumpkin pie more during the Thanksgiving season than I do during Halloween. Really? Mm. Yes, but it tastes better during Halloween. I think. Does it? I think it I think tastes so. the same. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Jesus. Damn it. That's why I you're need a to be noob. I need <laughs> to be <laughs> soulless it, and does it. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be inside of a pumpkin while eating pumpkin pie to, to oh, fully yeah. to fully feel it. Mm-hmm. Feel it, yeah. I guess we we've, we've talked a lot about pumpkin guts, but do you guys like pumpkin seeds? Like they're like yeah, oh, toasted, yeah. a little bit oh, of salt. absolutely. <laughs> mm. I did not expect that. Fill response. my guts with the pumpkin <laughs> seeds. Nice. <laughs> but like so... like pre pre seed or post seed or like pre like green ones or roasted ones? They're oh, roasted. roasted. 
like you like, get them. I've out. had regular like green ones a lot too. Huh. Interesting. Really? Yeah. Are you sure not thinking of No, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, no. I got I need them to be like when they're white and salted and roasted. Yeah. Crunch. I mean they're pretty I'm, good. Can't I'm mezzo mezzo on them, but I'm I I love that for people who love them. Damn, roasted. <laughs> like these pumpkin seeds that I'm gonna eat. <laughs> Um, all right, my recipe. Uh, my recipe, I'm leaning into the fact that uh, uh, Guzzlord sounds a little bit like Glizzlord, uh, so it's going to be a hot dog-related <laughs> recipe this week for me. Um, so Guzzlord's all about gluttony, like uh, eating like shit, garbage. You're going to have uh, 20 <laughs> heart attacks from eating my meal this week, um, but you're going to love every single bite of it. This is a meal for a Ninja Turtle. Um, that's how mm. I'm going to describe my, uh, my recipe this week. So we're going to have a Gliz Lord hot dog pizza this week where Ooh. the hot dog is baked into the crust of the pizza. Oh, you just Whoa. like dominoes did. Yes. Wow. Whoa. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Guzz Lord and Guzz Lord's so fucking big that we can get as much <laughs> uh, hot dog meat from him as we want. And we can make this fucking hot dog hoop that we're going to put in the fucking crust of our pizza. <laughs> like hoop. diameter, one foot, two feet, three feet, bam. Fuck you. We can make this, this Guzz Gliz Lord pizza as big as you want and the bigger the better because we've got a guzzlord appetite for this glizzlord pizza so we're gonna get the guzzlord we're gonna scrape off like some of that meat we're gonna grind it make a big nice sausage out of it we're gonna set that aside for the time being we're going to make our a pizza dough and then we're going to very carefully wrap the 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 sausage in a nice circle in our pizza dough and i'm gonna just make i'm we're gonna go with the basics here pepperoni that's what we're gonna do with our pizza but it's gonna come with a twist because what is the defining feature of guzzlord it's his giant fucking mouth and what we're gonna do is we're gonna arrange the pepperonis on the pizza to make an image of guzzlord's mouth on the pizza so you Mm. are indulging in a gluttonous meal eating the guzzlord's mouth in our glizzlord guzzlord pizza and that's my recipe this week Gotcha. Ian, you can go first because I got one after. <laughs> when I think of like wieners and pizza, usually the pepperoni is the we- that like the wiener involved. It, uh-huh. it is. Sure. It, it is definitely a type of dried and cured sausage. Yes, I agree. Right. With that. So, what, do you think that a dried cured sausage could make it into the crust, or do you need this thing to be wet and wild? <laughs> uh, it's a little, it's a little more hot dog aesthetic because you want it a little less chewy in the crust than you do sure. on the top of the pizza. Mm. Okay, that's that's my opinion on the situation. I, Feel free to I, disagree. I just got <laughs> stuck on the like gliz ring, like the hot dog ring. Like, how does yes. one achieve that? I'm I'm just imagining so, like a gliz centipede situation where you have to like feed it. Right. So you, so know, you make a mouth very and it's very <laughs> long hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it's like three feet long and then yeah. it, you get you get your pizza dough and you just you're gonna circle the hot dog around the pizza <laughs> dough and you're just gonna like fucking pigs in a blanket you know we love mm. pigs on a blanket on this show we've talked about it extensively mm. um but what we're gonna do is we're gonna you know curl it up in the pizza dough around it and uh, most times when you get hot dogs, they're pre-cooked, like when you buy them from the store. Uh, that won't be sure. the case here because we're going to cook it with uh, the pizza so it doesn't like become overcooked in preparation. Um, so with your uh, toppings uh, and stuff, uh, you'll, you'll add that to the center, stick it in the oven for like, you know, whatever. I don't know how long you usually cook a pizza, probably like 20 minutes or whatever for this, mm. uh, for this one. And it'll, mm-hmm. be, uh, it'll be good to go. And since the... Uh, Sausage isn't going to be like super thick in the crust because you want it to be, you know, still kind of handheld. It'll still cook all the way through in this situation. So, um, yes, Ian. I'm just thinking about like, uh, you know, if we have like a transformer verse of this like hot dog pizza mayhem. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about what translates because like Tortino's is definitely like the pig in the blanket of of it yeah. right like you have a little yeah. mini mini wiener inside the totina pizza roll humiliating so, so the humiliating. pizza the, the, the totinas are filled with like pizza toppings i don't think they have a hot dog in them. <laughs> well but they could 
is what like if we're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm trying to get at here. I, I think you will have to DIY your Totina's pizza rolls plus pigs in the blanket <laughs> if you want that situation. No, no, you go to the in this universe. You go to the store. You bought the, your your pig Tino pizza hog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then if you step that up, maybe like uh, you get a square pizza, cut a strip of that. Mm-hmm. It's like a hot dog bun. Mm. You just oh. put the hot dog. So you get you get a Detroit stuff. style pizza. You get yeah. your Totina's pizza hogs, and then you <laughs> place them in the two slices of your Detroit style pizza, and you eat them like a taco. Is that what you're saying? Sure. Yeah. Or, or, or like sandwich. a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, man. But, but perhaps what upsets me the most is if he took a calzone and there was just a free floating hot dog, like a, like, <laughs> it's like an unborn <laughs> child inside of. <laughs> it's like it's like the uh, that cake for um, that holiday that I'm totally uh, a king cake. Oh, for Mardi Gras. You know, the king, yeah, Mardi Gras. Mar- yeah, which I, has I was like Mar- margarita gras. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nice. a king cake which has a baby in it. Yes, exactly. So you find the hot dog and you're like king for a day or whatever. Yeah. Right. Whoa. Um, I will say um, that that's not what I'm proposing, so you don't have to... No, I know. I I just like... um, You've just opened up like a a can of... A new world of pizza cross hot dog possibilities. (laughs) Hot cross buns. It's like... (laughs) It's like I give Ian like a can. I'm like, this can is full of hot dogs and he opens it. It's like snakes that jumps out at him. Uh, But they're hot (laughs) dogs still. It's like if Pandora's box had a hot dog inside of it. <laughs> or does it? Hope was not at the bottom. It was a hot dog. Mm. Um, I did eat four hot dogs for dinner tonight. <laughs> wow. So, I did. They're on my mind. He's glizzed up. Yeah. 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 Did you did you glizz champ them or did you eat them normally? Um, I, I ate them normally. I didn't okay. have it. I, I don't have that dog in me to... <laughs> You didn't you suck you one down and then like game? dunk the bun in water and then eat yeah. that. Yeah, I, I didn't chestnut it either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I have to chestnut it tonight, and then you eat 20 hot dogs in 10 minutes. God damn it! We're all chestnutting here. <laughs> oh no. I it, I think that it's funny that you've already you said that because I was thinking as Jeremy was explaining like. Under normal circumstances, this recipe would be actually kind of disgusting to me, but I'm so hungry right now that actually that sounds really good. But so, like, here's the thing. I've, I've not had this. It's always, like, kind of perplexed me as a food item, basically mm-hmm. because of the giant hot dog ring, where it's like, how do you get that going? And the answer is you just put it in pizza dough. It, it's pretty straightforward. You could um, use like regular hot dogs and then just like use that to section off your slices you, of pizza. You could, True. but giant one long wiener is funnier. That's right. fair. Um, but yeah. here's the thing: is that I agree with Ben, where it's like gross conceptually, but it's one of those gross things where you're like, yeah, I could slam one of those. Mm, the like, more that I think about it, I'm like, there's nothing inherently wrong with hot dogs and bread and cheese and maybe even tomato sauce being yeah. on, in the same world you know because that's basically what you put on a hot dog yeah minus the tomato sauce ketchup yep yep there you go damn it all comes together oh man i don't know if i like comparing ketchup to tomato sauce as an italian (laughs) uh, as an italian (laughs) all i'm saying is that it has is it has it has similar like it's presented in a different manner, but you have some, red. It, you're existing in a similar flavor profile. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> this will, we'll save this for the Patreon after show. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in the multiverse, there is a universe where they make pizzas using ketchup, and then they put <laughs> tomato sauce on their hot dogs. <laughs> I mean, I'd do it. I'd do it. <laughs> I would, would look. Would, I would, if you just give me a jar of ragu, I would put it on a hot dog just to see what's going on. <laughs> I think we found our first video cooking episode. Is we all have to make a pizza oh, using no. ketchup as the base. <laughs> oh. I thought you were gonna say like we open up our shopping bags and we all have the same ingredients. It's a can of red sauce, uh, a bin of hot dogs, a pizza bin, dough. A bin. <laughs> pizza dough. <laughs> 
What can you make? That, it works, chefs. That's pretty good, actually. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Cocktail wieners. Anyway, that's my recipe. So the Iron Chef it. All right. Let's review our recipes. From Ian, we have Guzzlord Pontifax Cake. From Evan, we have Guzzlord Goat Stew. From Ben, we have Guzzlord Black Pumpkin. Uh, what was the candy recipe again? Calabaza and Tacha. Calabaza and Tacha. And for me, we have Guzzlord Glizzlord uh, Pizza. So I want everyone to vote. And then I want Ben to tell me who the best, the winner was. I, I will. You will? You will tell us? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I will because I won this week. Hey. How does it feel? With two votes. It feels great. Um, Jeremy got my vote and Ian got a vote as well. Nice. All right. Great. Ben, you're the Halloween uh, monarch for next week. Uh, so you're like a Jack Skellington, the Halloween king, whatever. I am the Guzz Lord. Mm. Oh, shit. Mm. Tell your friends and family I've been crowned the Guzz Lord. And let's. <laughs> Speaking of lords, let's move over to the favorite uh, horde of said lord, which is our email section, Whale Lord's Mail Horde. Um, so, we've got a couple of emails this week. Ian, can you read this email from Ed? Yeah, I was just thinking about an alternate universe where uh, it's called Guzz Lord's Buzz Horde. <laughs> Guzz Lord's slurp em up emails. Everyone has to add us, like, on our BuzzFeed uh, <laughs> yeah, page or whatever. There you go. Is that a thing? All right. BuzzFeed. Ooh. <laughs> Ed writes. I can... <laughs> God. I, I mean, that is a junkie website, so that's perfect. Yeah. Um, Ed writes, I can rock with Lick and Rock. Like and Rock, sorry. Hello, all. Hope you are enjoying the mail horde so far this episode. And I hope you like my recipe. Ed uh i like it already because it's here here <laughs> cue music oh. uh imagine some like kind of upbeat uh accordion polka rock like rock is a dog that uh it rocks it really rocks <laughs> this puppy is souped up with three beautiful forms that will inspire some slight variations to our dishes today this dish is actually imported from uh, Galler to Aloha. Oh, sorry. Aloha. <laughs> Alola. But based you on said Alolan's that with such wit- conviction. I did, <laughs> and I still <laughs> ruined it. But first, I'd like to pose a question to the hosts and a listener. Who is a man's best friend? Mine is a cat, but I'm not a man. Damn. Same. It's dogs. <laughs> what does that mean? Dogs. I yes. Mean, historically. Historic. Yeah. Good job, everyone. Much like the cat redistribution system, dogs can latch onto and bond with humans relatively quickly. When you're out and about, they're social creatures, much like people are. And from Lycanroc's flavor text, we can see that they make incredibly strong bonds with their trainers, especially midday and dusk forms of Lycanroc. But this poses the question, is there a food that bonds with a person? One that follows it home? That's why not. today my recipe. I would I'm... hope not either. That sounds like a horrible experience, honestly. <laughs> I guess a pizza follows me home if I order it correct in a certain manner. I'm thinking more in the way that you're like, ah, oh, I had a like amazing trip to Spain, mayhaps. Um, but that last dish really followed me home my whole flight. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's not a good thing. Oh, okay. You're you're blasting that's you're blasting the cash in the like, You're blasting all eight thirteen hours <laughs> plane ride all, back to America. <laughs> oh, that's my worst nightmare. <laughs> that's the that's the food that follows you home. I was thinking like leftovers. <laughs> well, that's okay, that's a little bit more tame. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ed was thinking of lie can of rocking and rolling chef in DD ravioli. Sure. <laughs> like, you guys remember the ad where the the, 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 the uh, can Chef of uh, Chef Boyardee like, yeah. like follows that child oh, home? Oh, yeah. yes. Which I always okay. thought was kind of fucked up. When I was... Really? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. Why would that happen? Chef Boyardee surveillance state. <laughs> yes. It's fucking 1984 like over thing. here with Chef Boyardee. <laughs> what are we making pasta out of dogs? 
Oh. We'll have three flavor palettes to cook from here. Sun-dried tomato and feta desk form. A perfect dinner. Midnight flavor blasted gamer fuel. And sick day form. Uh, Classic ricotta and mozzarella ravioli mom's recipe. Each form of lichen rock is going to have their own different flavor profile, which will influence the flavor and effects of each can of ravioli. To make this ravioli, we'll be shearing the main off of our wanted form of lichen rock and reducing it in a pan to make the dough. A lichen rock main is so thick that when reduced, it turns into a paste. This has to do with the small bits of ground fiber, rocks, in the main. Hmm. Once that is cooked down, we'll put it into our sanitized and generously floured work area, apply some flour to our rolling pin and hands, and roll out the dough for the filling of the ravioli. That depends on the form. For the midday and dusk forms, we'll actually just be using some a blend of milk, milk cheese with Mudsdale milk cheese. Mm. Uh, for the midnight gamer fuel, we must use the meat of the beast. This is only for the strongest, the biggest, the baddest gamers out there. Oh, shit. Midnight form lichen rocks are extremely fierce. They love fighting and are inspired only by an opponent or ally stronger than themselves. And it says read fast below. Disclaimer, Midnight Gamer Fuel does not actually contain any lichen rock as it would be too dangerous for the current generation of gamers to eat lichen rock flesh as it would be the collapse of society. Nice. Is it also Great. sponsored by Modern Warfare 3? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Kind yeah. Right. Just... Midnight Gamer Fuel is a regular ravioli, but with midnight form dough. It's got a zing to it. Uh, to give it enough kick to kill a sick uh, Hisuian child but it's functionally the same as pizza-flavored goldfish. Chef and Dee Dee's lichen, lichens of rocking and rolling ravioli are the most loyal meal a child could ask for. Fine, <laughs> your local pasta aisle today, and maybe rolling home after you as well. Okay, I'm going to gonna say this right now. Again, weird fucked up. I don't want food. I don't want a sentient can of <laughs> pasta following me home. That's weird. <laughs> anyway, gamer fuel sounds good. I'm going to be gaming after this podcast. So, What about, like, chickens? Because they come home to roost? Is that what you're getting at? <laughs> no, like, imagine, like, you went to the market, and then you have your, like, the chickens follow you home for you to... Mm. Maybe we're just so far removed from our food source. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True. I'm, okay, I'm see, but that's, like, a living object. Farm uh, to table. Yeah. Farm about to it. home. Yes. <laughs> I think the big, biggest <laughs> issue is that we talked about ghosts earlier, that this fucking Chef Bardi can is like fucking Danny Phantoming me home uh, for kind of this situation. I don't want that. Okay. All right. Evan, can you read this email from Mike? Mike says, uh, Guzzlord? More like Glizzlord. Am I right? You're right. Uh, how many hot dogs do you think this thing could fit in that bottomless void of a tum-tum he's got? He would beat, I think he would beat Joey Chestnut. I think he would I win. I think so, too. Did you know this thing doesn't poop? It can devour cities, but it doesn't poop. Uh, did you, do you know about uh, the meal known as a garbage plate? It's a meal made famous by some diner in Rochester, New York, and I quote, A traditional garbage plate is your choice of cheeseburger, hamburger, white or red hots, a.k.a. hot dogs, especially those made by local company Zweigel's. Italian sausage, chicken, or grilled cheese served on top of any combination of home fries, french fries, baked beans, and or macaroni salad. The plate is usually topped with a Rochester-style meat hot sauce. Optional mustard, onions, and ketchup may be added on top. A garbage plate is traditionally served with a side of buttered bread in case you were still hungry. Uh, so tie a rope around yourself, dive into that infinite gullet, go grocery shopping, cook it, and enjoy. Sorry, I had a busy day. Love, Mike. Um, that I like, like that there's lot. just a whole grilled cheese in there as well. <laughs> there is. It's, it oh, sounds man. like a bit much, so lay heavy in it. your stomach. I mean, I'm, I'm I all for defi- it. I would definitely give it a shot. I'm not Again, no. we're, we're this far into recording and me not eating that even though this should disgust me right now, I'm actually like, I could eat this right now. I'm ready. Um and and the grilled cheese part of it reminds me of when we were in Sacramento for uh, uh, Evan's wedding, and I got a eggs Benedict that had grilled cheese instead of oh. the uh, uh, like 
what am I trying to say? English muffin. Mm-hmm. And that I was sounds like, awesome. I've thought about it since. Like, <laughs> that restaurant was fuck. Cool. So you gotta recreate then. that. I mean, I could, but it probably wouldn't be as good. It was just like as I was eating it too, I was like, "This is, this is trash." It's just literally like an egg and stuff <laughs> on top of a grilled cheese. Like I don't know why I'm like losing it, but it's it. Everything was so good. If I did it at home, it wouldn't work. You know what I mean? Like it just, mm. it wouldn't work. That's Excellent. Fair. Thanks so much for writing in. As always, our emails I choose pod at gmail dot com. Um, now, normally, this is where we pick next week's Pokemon in a section I like to call pick on But uh, next week's episode is going up on Halloween. Uh, so I decided to make an executive decision, which is choose the most spookiest, uh, Halloweeniest uh, Pokemon uh, from mm. this, uh, this season uh, to, to cook next week. You guys can disagree with me about my decision, uh, but I'm thinking next week we should cook Mimikyu, which is the ghost type oh, Pokemon good. that pretends to be Pikachu. Oh yeah, pretty good. Oh yeah, I'm in. It's so cooked. Send in your Mimikyu recipes to ichoosepod at gmail dot com. It's i c h e w s p o d at gmail dot com. Uh, let's hand it over to the plug section with Ben. Tell us where we can find you on the internet. You can uh, find me on the internet at Twitter uh, at Ben C Montoya, or mainly these days on Tumblr at thefearandnow dot tumblr dot com. Excellent. Let's go over to Ian. You can follow me at Musician Davis. I play bass. I bake bread. Um, that's my whole existence, so follow me. Excellent. Evan, where are you at? Uh, I'm at E underscore Van on posts or E underscore Van Aubrey on Twitter. All right. You can find me at Velocity Prime One on Twitter. Velocity Prime No One on Tumblr, and I'm now on the Blue Sky social media network at mm. Velocity Prime One. So follow me there. I'll whenever I get codes, I'll pop up a I Choose uh, You uh, page on that social media outfit as well. Uh, Is it so, as good as Twitter used to be? Um, no, because it's super glitchy and things keep breaking, and um, yeah. uh, it doesn't have like a real search function. It doesn't have like hashtags which i find somewhat com- confounding mm-hmm. like you can't like search for stuff you 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 look in different community like communities of people <laughs> let me tell you a funny thing i was, I was just scroll- scrolling through the most popular communities because i was like uh maybe i'll look at one right and <laughs> i thought it was very funny that there was a community just called art and it was like the official one created by the the team that runs it and it had like something like you know 1500 people in a part of mm-hmm. it and then the community that was most popular that was right above it was furry art at like 2500 yeah all right Blue <laughs> sky. Like, well there you go they know that people know where it's at <laughs> this uh this fucking platform's here to stay that's all i'm gonna say uh, so, yeah. <laughs> it will it will survive <laughs> it will it will fucking survive i know it'll survive because i you can find furry porn on it and it's promoted in the discovery section of the application, which I thought was Let's very go. funny. Um, so, yes, uh, Blue Sky, you can follow me there at Velocity Prime 1. Um, also, the avocado.org, Jeremy Zelik, find all my writings, the avocado.org. All right, I choose you, the podcast about cooking and eating Pokemon. You can find us on your favorite podcast apps, including Apple Podcasts, Google Plays. Spotify, or your podcast catcher of choice. If you like our show, make sure to give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us go up the ranks. If you want more I Choose You goodness, check out our social media pages. I Choose Pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Tumblr, uh, TikTok, and Threads. If you want more, uh, if you want to be part of the I Choose You community, join the I Choose You Discord. Links are in the episode description. Share, uh, share your uh, uh, recipes, talk with fellow choosies, and participate in community events all on the I Choose You Discord. Uh, lastly, but not leastly, check out the official I Choose You webpage, I Choose You Menu. I Choose You Menu has a full episode archive and merch store, all designed by one Evan Aubrey. That's at I Choose You Menu. And for I Choose You, I've been your host and Alton Brown of the group, Jeremy Zelig. I've been your friend on this show, Ben Montoya. I've been Ian Davis, your King Triple Chuck. <laughs> they call him Triple Chuck. <laughs> yeah. And, you should uh, tell that to his face. 
My name is Evan Aubrey. <laughs> <laughs> And to all the choosies out there in Radio Land, in a while, Totodile. We've been consuming. Presuming, leguming, cracking cans and having feasts. Munching, crunching, slurping, Pokemon and Ultra Beasts. I choose you. Season sevens our destiny. Let's eat some Alolan food. I choose you.